Hello, ninth graders. Today we're going to talk about life, the gift of God, in chapter sixteen. The theme of this lesson is the value of life and the challenges against life. Under the existing circumstances, when attacks against life are increasing constantly, the commandment "You shall not kill" is most necessary for the existence of humankind. This is the commandment which proclaims perfect respect for life and responsibility for the preservation of life. In the first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter one, we read that the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, hovered over the face of the waters, and that the earth was formless, empty, and dark. This is in Genesis chapter one, verse two. When God miraculously spoke with His almighty word and power, everything immediately came into being: the light, the atmosphere, the land, water and plant life, the sun, moon, and stars, the birds of the air, and the fish of the seas, and finally every land animal and the crown of His creation, human life. God graciously creates, sustains, and cares for life at every stage. Pre-born, infancy, adolescence, maturity, and old age. Even though the people of Israel received the commandments in the background of the covenant at Sinai, we can see that the commandment "You shall not kill" existed from the very beginning of creation. Whenever man destroyed life, God reacted against it. God proclaims forcefully that no one has any right over the human life. Created in the image and likeness of God, and this is in Genesis chapter nine, verse five to six. In Exodus chapter twenty, verse fourteen, and Deuteronomy chapter five, verse seventeen, God means through the fifth commandment that all should honor human life. The Old Testament teaches that those who take away human life should be punished with death. Jesus taught all commandments on the basis of the commandment of love. Jesus told that there should be no kind of fraternal hatred. Jesus taught and showed it through his life that one has to honor one's brother and deal with him in a loving manner. Human beings should live in harmony. The teaching of Jesus is to call a brother fool is worthy of judgment is a proof of how much God honors a human being. We ought to respect and honor human life in all its aspects. Jesus proclaimed that we should love our enemies and should pray for them, and he showed the same through his life. Lord Christ gave a new dimension to the fifth commandment. Now let's talk about the glory of man. God said thus before creating man, "Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness." In Genesis chapter one, verse twenty-six, God created human beings thus. The glory of the human being consists in that he or she is created in the image and likeness of God. God is the fountain of life. Only God has the power to give life and to take it back. The entire authority of life belongs to God alone. We've been called to have dominion over the earth to the glory of God, but we want dominion for the glory of man. That's what was going on at Babel—a distortion. An evil twisting of the legitimate task that God had given mankind. There's nothing wrong with building. There's nothing wrong with sowing and reaping. Those are the tasks God gave to us in creation, but they're do they're to be done under the authority of God. They're to be done quorum dio before the face of God, under the authority of God, and unto the glory of God. The fact Jesus the Messiah, who is Himself God, when He came to this earth, took the image and likeness of us human beings, increased the glory of human beings. Thus, man shines more than all other creatures. What made human life so glorious is that man has the image and likeness of God. Man, the crown of creation, holds a noble position in the scheme of the salvation of God. The life of The human being, and whatever he or she is, is in God's ownership. Hence, human being is not the owner of life, but he or she is only its custodian. The fifth commandment demands that life should be protected and promoted. 
By respecting and protecting life, each individual is fulfilling his fundamental duty and protecting his right. Human being, the custodian of life, should not only guard his or her own life, but also should show honor and love to every human life. If life is to be protected and honored, there should be circumstances conducive to it. Hence, each individual is obliged to maintain a peaceful atmosphere helpful for human society to survive. Each one should take special care to live in mutual love and unity. There should be peace among communities, religions, and countries. Only through this human life can be protected. There should be no action from anyone which would degrade the value of life. If human life were to be maintained, ecology which should be protected in the proper manner. Humankind has the obligation to protect the natural wealth around us. Unless humankind protects the animal and plant wealth in the right manner, it will be dangerous even to life in general. If proper growth and protection of human life should be possible, the other living beings, animals and plants are also to be protected. Hence, humankind is obliged to love and protect nature. Nature's protection is the fulfillment of the fifth commandment. If only health is protected, humankind can protect life. Hence, it is the serious responsibility of humankind to protect health. Health is inevitable to resist attacks against life and to maintain life. To protect health in the proper way is showing honor to life. The life of an individual is protected in a lofty manner when the health of the body, mind, and soul is protected. As protectors of life, each one is obliged not only to protect one's own life, but also the life of others. This is what is evident from the life of Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel are the first two sons of Adam and Eve. Cain, the firstborn, was a farmer and his brother Abel was a shepherd. The brothers made sacrifices to God, each of his own produce, but God favored Abel's sacrifice instead of Cain's. Cain grew envy of his brother and killed him, thus enacting the first murder in human history. We should understand that those around us are the children of God, and that they are also created in the image and likeness of God. Hence, all human beings are brothers. On that account, just as we protect our life, their life also is to be protected. This commandment stabilizes the fundamental right for all to live. Now let's talk about the evils against life. Life is a gift of God. Hence, life is especially glorious and valuable. But under present circumstances, attacks against life are on the increase every moment of the day. Human being is being looked upon as a mere thing and here is around us the tendency to destroy human life from its very inception. Many are the evils against human life. Let's go into them. Number one, murder. Murder is destroying the life of another human being. What happens in murder is the transgression of another human being's fundamental right to live. Murder is depicted as a grave evil in the Holy Scripture. The Holy Scripture bears witness that God will demand retribution from the murderer. The reasons that often lead towards murder are jealousy, selfishness, hatred, vindictiveness, disgust, boundary problem, wealth, licentiousness, etc. In the present day community, the number of murders is increasing daily. This is an act devoid of humaneness which does not honor life. Murder is a mortal sin. Murders are a threat to society itself. Two, abortion. From the first moment a fetus is born in the womb of its mother, there begins a new life. Abortion is an action which consciously destroys that life directly using any sort of means. The baby in the womb of its mother is a human person created in the image and likeness of God. Among the attacks against life, abortion is the most heinous and inhuman. The greatest cruelty of abortion is that the attack is directed against human life, which cannot in any way resist for self-protection. 
What happens in abortion is the destruction of a person having body and soul. By the very fact that the fetus has existence, it has every right to live. The Second Vatican Council teaches, life from the first moment of its existence in the womb of its mother is to be protected for, with the greatest care. Abortion and killing of baby are unpardonable sins. Church in the Modem World 51 Number three, mercy killing. Mercy killing is an action through which those who are weary of sickness, the aged and the handicapped are killed either with their consent or without in order to remove their sufferings and to avoid inconvenience. Under this circumstance, with the help of the doctor, either by having recourse to means which cause death to the patient or by stopping medication to the patient, death is hastened. Thus, mercy killing, which is thought to be a good thing, is cruel murder. Mercy killing is an action against the glory of man and against the paternity of God, the Creator. Since human being has no authority over life, to destroy life in order to get relief from suffering is a challenge against God. The sick people should be able to see the suffering, which results from illness and bodily deformity in Christian viewpoint and to undergo them uniting with the sufferings of the Lord. Romans chapter 5 verse 3 teaches us to rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. Similarly, James teaches this, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. James chapter 1 verse 2 to 4. Society has the responsibility to take care of the patients who experience inconvenience through pain and sufferings and by giving them love and happiness to engender hope for life. Number four, suicide. Suicide is to consciously destroy one's own life, which God has given gratis. One puts a stop to one's own life forsaking the authority of God on life. Since one has no sufficient understanding about life or about its value, one decides to end one's life. Suicide an escape and a self-retraction from life. What happens in suicide is a transgression of the responsibilities towards family and society. Often the reason for suicide is emotional bewilderment. In the rush of emotions, human being who loses reasoning considers suicide as the only means in order to escape from his responsibilities. Suicide is a grave evil in itself. In great despair and guilt, after betraying Christ, the burden Judas carried led him to choose suicide. His story is probably the most well-known account in the Bible on the tragedy of suicide. He was Jesus' own disciple. He walked with him, he was close to him, but yet he still didn't know him. And instead of repenting and seeking forgiveness after betraying Christ, he allowed the great burden of sin to lead him to this terrible end. And this is in Matthew chapter 27, verse 3 to 4. Today in our community, the number of those who commit suicide is enormously increasing. Just as the one who committed suicide has his personal responsibility, the society too has its responsibility in it. Psychological, social, and financial reasons cause suicide. Society should deal with those who would commit suicide with love and sympathy. The tendency to commit suicide will decrease when we impart knowledge about the immense mercy of God, about conviction of the high value of life, and the knowledge for protecting life. 5. The Use of Intoxicating Drugs In the present-day community, use of drugs is a very fast-growing evil. It's an evil that indirectly destroys life, which is to be rightly protected. In the present generation, the youngsters consider the use of drugs as a symbol of social status. Drugs affect greatly the health of the body, mind, and soul. Drugs ordinarily used are liquor, tobacco, 
marijuana, cocaine, etc. The functioning capacity of many organs of the body is lost through the use of intoxicating drugs. Hence, the uses of drugs become unable to think properly and to act discreetly. The use of drugs prevents one to lead an ordinary life. The use of drugs is indirect suicide. The duration of human life is reduced due to the use of intoxicating drugs. Human being considers life as a mere thing for pleasure instead of taking good care of it. The use of drugs will gradually lead human being to great disaster. To cut away the limbs of a person, to inflict heavy blows, and to persecute one are evils against life. Human being who ought to honor life by oppressing it is oppressing God the giver of life. Finally, mental assault. Not only the bodily attacks, but to oppress others mentally, to talk badly, to insult others, and to speak ill of others are grave faults. It's because of this the Lord Jesus said, If you call your brother a fool, you will be liable to judgment. Matthew chapter 5 verse 22 If through someone's speech and actions, another one is mentally oppressed, that is indirect murder. Good form of speech and dealing is part of honoring life. That is, it is honor to God, the giver of life. Besides evils of this kind against life, to kidnap human being, to forcibly keep someone under custody, terrorist activities, etc. are evils against life. All these happen because one sees the value of life small and God is not recognized as the source of life. We have the responsibility as good Christians to eradicate these kinds of actions from society. The commandment, you shall not kill, primarily means to honor life. Together with that, this commandment aims to prohibit all activities against life. Humankind has the moral responsibility to respect and safeguard life, the gift of God. It's part of this responsibility to protect this universe, to maintain ecological balance, to prevent atmospheric pollution, and to safeguard human life from its very inception. Thus, we have the obligation to love and honor life and to gratefully glorify God, the giver of life. Human beings, the creatures of God, without loving each other, hates and destroys life. About these people who do not fear the judgment of God, we remember in the morning prayer of Saturday in Shaimo thus, Life is the gift of God. We have the obligation to safeguard and nourish the life of others also. Hence, let us try to avoid all evils that destroy life and become protectors of life. Now here's your Bible verse to memorize. Upon you I have leaned from my birth. It was you who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. Psalm 71 verse 6. Let's review your questions for this lesson. What is the new interpretation Jesus gave to the commandment, you shall not kill? Clarify the glory of human life. What do we mean by saying life is to be protected? Why is abortion said to be evil? Lastly, how does the use of intoxicants become sin? Now let's go over your activity for this week. From personal sin to social sin. Read the information and quotations from Pope St. John Paul II's 
reconciliation, and penance, and then answer the questions that follow. The information is as follows. Sins of individuals can give rise to social situations and institutions opposed to God's goodness, such as legalized abortion and euthanasia, slavery, child labor, prostitution, and exploitation of third world countries for profit. Structures that perpetuate violence, injustice, and other disorders in society are called social sin. Social sin is an outgrowth of personal sins and leads its victims to do evil. Pope St. John Paul II said in Reconciliation and Penance, Sin in the proper sense is always a personal act, since it is an act of freedom on the part of an individual person and not properly of a group or community. This individual may be conditioned, incited, and influenced by numerous and powerful external factors. He may also be subjected to tendencies, defects, and habits linked with his personal condition. In not a few cases, such as external and internal factors may affect, to a greater or lesser degree, the person's freedom and therefore his responsibility and guilt. It is a truth of faith, also confirmed by our experience and reason, that the human person is free. This truth cannot be disregarded in order to place the blame for the individual's sins on external factors such as structures, systems, or other people. Above all, this would be to deny the person's dignity and freedom which are manifested, even though in a negative and disastrous way, also in this responsibility for sin committed. Hence, there is nothing so personal and untransferable in each individual as merit for virtue or responsibility for sin. It's true that we live in a culture that has tried to make grave sins like abortion and euthanasia less serious and has even tried to celebrate some grave sins. For your activity, name some issues below that the church teaches against that have been normalized and even encouraged in modern society. Well, ninth graders, that's all for Sunday school today. So make sure you go back and review your lesson, memorize your Bible verse and answer your questions, as well as complete the activity for your homework. Have a wonderful week. God bless you. Bye.